Good day everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hey, I'm shooting this video from Idaho Falls, Idaho in Kevin Kittle's house up here. And we uh, arrived in Idaho Falls with this typewriter in the trunk of his car. This is a Royal Empress that we uh, picked up on uh, the way up here in an antique store in Salt Lake City. And I thought it would be really fun to review this typewriter. Stay tuned. Well, the Royal Empress is a lot like the full-size Royal typewriters of its predecessor that sort of has its lineage all the way back to the Royal 10. So I thought it would be a good way to start off by just looking at the detailed features of the Royal Empress. Okay, so on the upper left of the keyboard is the tab clear button. So this machine does have a uh, full tabulator settings. And on the upper right is the tab set button. And above that is the bichrome setting lever. And this goes between stencil on the left, top of the ribbon or black in the middle and bottom of the ribbon or red to the right. And then below the tab set button is the tabulator button itself for activating the tabs. And then you have a margin release on the right above the right shift. And it's a standard American keyboard. So if you go back to the upper left, you notice there's not a one or an exclamation mark. So it's a kind of a standard older style keyboard, except all the way to the right above the margin release, it does have an equals and a plus sign. So this was one of those kind of a hybrid keyboards between the older style and when they finally did have the number one on the modern typewriters. And what's interesting, look at the space bar. It's almost like they took the space bar and turned it 90 degrees and so you have the narrow edge which would have been facing to the front or the back on top now so it's a narrow area to press and also the royal badge has been covered up with this action office equipment uh, logo or decal metallic decal which brings us up to the point that we're not sure if on this particular machine if it actually ever had the royal badge Yes. There's no little hole where the plastic badge would have slipped into to hold it in place. It's all smooth. And then also back to the ribbon color selector, there's no machining for the little dots that would have been painted white, possibly blue, and then red. And all of the examples of these same models on the typewriter database galleries all show the version with the machine dimples for white, black, or blue and red dots. Uh, but we did do some external internet searches and did find other examples of these Royal Empresses that did not have the dots. So apparently a couple, yeah. a couple. So apparently there were there were several different versions, but we don't really understand whether they were special order or like for, for large institutions or whatever. And it could have been that when they did it this way that they were decals and the decals have come off rather than being recessed. Right. And the same with the Royal logo. It might have been a decal yes. that has come off and then was covered over by this office equipment. Right. We did see logo. two styles of molded badges for Royal. We saw the silverish one with the swish kind of color. Which is on the back side. On the of back this. side. And then we also saw one that had a giant red one that looked like an overly large version of the a uh, royal badge that pushes in to release the ribbon cover on the portable on the models. portable models but it was an oversized one in the middle there so we've seen several different versions of the royal badge on these models so this is the left side of the carriage on the royal empress and if you notice that it has the standard scale for your paper guide and your paper bale a couple of rollers for that and then we have moving to the, from back to the front, you have the magic margin setting, which is common for most royals. And then this is the ratchet release, is what I call it, but for releasing the uh, line spacing, but you don't lose your indexing. And then it has one, two, and three line spacing setting here, and does not have the one and a half or two and a half line spacing, it's just one, two, or three. And then this is your carriage release button on this side, and then of course your platen knob, roller knob, and it has the clutch mechanism for your uh, infinite carriage release that does not uh, go back to your original position. Moving up to your uh, carriage return lever, which is this nice large paddle coming out. And if you notice, this one was definitely used. It has a 
splotch right here on top of the carriage release lever. And we figured that was from a secretary that was using nail polish remover acetone. and an acetone. acetone base took off the uh, paint that was right on there. Now what is interesting on this part here on the carriage or the uh, platen itself, it has an end of line indicator for the end of the uh, page. And this one is a little different that it has different lengths of pointed lines to indicate how many lines are left before you get to the very end of the page. And it is unique that this means you have eight lines left. This one means you have six, four, and then all the way to two, and then you're at the end. And that is the very end of the paper. So the platen itself is, this is an 11 inch model, which goes with the serial number, which says 11 as a prefix to the serial number. And it is also like a Smith Corona. You can easily pop the platen in and out and exchange it for a different hardness of platen, depending if you wanted to do stencils, or in our case, for replacing the platen to uh, get rid of the hard aged platen. And then right above that is the line meter and that is where you set the end of your piece of paper as you adjust your line indicator so that it will tell you the end of a, any size of paper because you start at the bottom for your adjustment. And on the right side of the carriage we have again the right hand magic margin control lever and then the platen release knob for allowing you to straighten the paper or feed in thicker pieces of paper, standard. And then the carriage release for moving the carriage back and forth. And then the right hand knob, which has a, stylistically looks the same, but it's fixed and doesn't actually move. And it does have a finger on this side and on the left side for making it easy to grab, pull the paper rail forward or to grab and lift up out of the way. And that's one thing that we're going to do as we move toward the middle of the machine is that it has the same features as a KMM model or an FP or the whole evolutionary uh, cycle of the, basically the Model 10 Royal from about 1912 thereabouts when they brought in the Model 10. And what's fascinating is when you pull the ribbon cover off, which comes off very easily, you'll notice inside the body the chassis is quite a distance for this body. And that's because essentially it's a Model 10 on the inside. Here we have our touch control right underneath the ribbon spool, the classic Royal ribbon spools with the automatic reverse that's built onto the bottom of the spools. And the ribbon motion is not done by the key action, but it's actually done by the carriage moving back and forth. And so it's pretty fascinating that this is essentially a Royal 10 typewriter in a later model. So this, as you see, this is the uh, model number, which is an MCE, MC standing for, I think maybe it might've been an abbreviation or Empress without the E. And then the letter C, which I don't know what that exactly stood for. And then the letter E, and in this model, it's an elite typeface. Had this been a Pica typeface, that would be a P. And then you have the carriage length, which is 11 inches on here, and they did carriages up to 13, 16, 21, and 27 inches. And they were set for the machines. And then the serial number going across there. And this serial number here, so this is 747 of the first three digits of the serial number. And looking on the typewriter database, we were trying to figure out the age of this typewriter. And we figure by what is listed on the uh, typewriter database that this would have been a late 1962 model typewriter since according to the typewriter database the first three numbers started 750 in 1963 and the machines were made from a 62 through 65 so four-year production cycle on this body style. One thing we notice on the feature here the feed roller is not rubber so underneath the platen the main feed roller is nearly full length and it's not rubber, it's an aluminum roller with some plastic ends. Very different, I haven't seen that. So this won't go flat. That is one difference between the older Royals where this was a solid piece of rubber going across. And they do flatten if they're left in position. Now there are rubber feed rollers. On but this. there are rubber feed rollers on the front. But they changed this back one to aluminum, which is pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah. One thing we thought was really interesting in the design of this 
is that it has a really long paper table back here which replaces the need for paper fingers on the back of the typewriter because it's so long and it keeps your paper from flopping onto the table. And then of course we have our Royal logo back here in the back and the back, nice clean lines of back covering up the tabulator mechanism. And then we have this number here which we presume is from some institution labeling the typewriter. Could have been a school, most likely not military, could have been a large business, or it could have been a church or some place where they had these type of typewriters. And that it's a narrower carriage kind of makes you think that it was not necessarily a business typewriter. It was more a correspondence typewriter for an institution. And one thing we've noticed on this particular model, the Empress, was at the magic margin, you can set it so you can make three columns per page with this machine. So we have our left magic margin set there and then do 25 characters for a narrow three column thing and your magic margin goes all the way there and so there it is. And so then if you bypass that and we want to change it to make now the center column, open it up and then let's say you start at space 30 instead of 25 there, move your left magic to 25 spaces and now you have your center column and you can do the same for the third. Uh, not all Royals will do that. Not all machines with magic margin style mechanism will do that. A Hermes 3000 won't do that. It won't go narrow enough. The Royal Portables, Quiet Deluxe, Futura, won't go narrow enough to do that. Three columns. Well, this typewriter is certainly one of the more spectacular body styles of the entire Royal full-size typewriter lineup. If you start with the Royal 10 and take it all the way forward to the what the 440 and the 330 440 and they had some other numbers. Yeah, and back at near the near the end of the whole production line it went for over half a century yep. for this basic mechanism. But this here came out in what we're saying the early nice. 1962. 1962. And one of the striking things about this body style is if you kind of look at the lines of it, it looks so much like a uh, the original IBM Selectric. Yes. In fact, it looks so much like it that we've speculated that this body style might have been a marketing decision on Royal's part. It had to have been because the IBM Selectric came out in 1961 and a half. And yeah. then this came out in 1962 and it was such a stylistically different or even more, even more evolutionary. It was sort of like the fins because the IBMs yeah. had the executive and it had sort of this curviness right. to it. But then it was like the fins on the cars in the 50s. They got more and more fins. And so right. then they, IBM Selectric had this really dynamic yeah. curving area here. And then Royal just took it one step further and really did it well with this machine. Yeah, and the idea of it is serving the market for office typewriters. Right. But one of the things that makes us question the marketing judgment, if our theory is correct, which it may not be, is of course they updated the the aesthetics of the machine. I mean, look at the uh, carriage return number looks like an ice cream scoop. Yeah, you literally could scoop ice cream out with it. I mean, it is so late 50s kind of sci-fi looking kind of a Very look, much, right? yeah. We're heading toward the Jetsons. The now. Jetsons, definitely. But you look at the keyboard, it doesn't even have a number one or an exclamation mark. Right. Right. It's, so the same it's, keyboard yeah, layout from 1912. 19, 1912. And if they really were trying to compete with IBM, the original Selectric, which had originally a cloth ribbon setup, you know, okay, they had a cloth ribbon, this has a cloth ribbon, but you know, you got to question whether this was really a, a good seller. I mean, uh, how long did this model last in the market? It lasted about four to five years on the market, this right. particular body design, until they changed it. But the same typewriter mechanism kept going from yes. there, and it had been going for years, and that's probably one of the reasons. They didn't want to retool to change certain parts that would add extra features. Even though yeah. in the typewriter manual that came with this, it advertises how this is a full feature typewriter yeah. Yeah. that no other typewriter has, and it's <laughs> fantastic. They exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> but as far as a typewriter for a collector such as yourself, 
uh, you walked into that antique store in Salt Lake City. Yeah, it was surprising. We walked in there to the Capital City Antique Mall in Salt Lake City, not knowing what to expect. Turns out to be a, a well-stocked antique store with all kinds of stuff. And the first thing we see almost right at the front was a row of typewriters that yeah. sitting there, and they had a big selection. They had Most of them shows. were in, in rough shape. They were pretty rough shape. This was in such good shape that you typed the check. Yes, when I purchased this, I typed the check <laughs> and uh, uh, on the typewriter, on the ribbon that was still there, which had enough ink on it, yeah. it was just definitely wearing out so that it was starting to punch through. And you could see the people working at the antique store were kind of agog at the... <laughs> they were surprised about that, too. People were typing the check on the very typewriter. In fact, what did the young lady say after she said... Oh, it, was, it looks professional. It looks, looks professional. Well, that's she, what she, typewriters are supposed that's to That's supposed to do, yeah. Well, let's talk about... Uh, my observation as I saw you operate this, we got it here to your house, and you took to it really quick, it looks like. Well, of all the typewriters I've bought, and I've bought many, this was the first typewriter that I didn't really have to do anything to on one that had been sitting for a long time. Yeah. It wasn't and isn't dirty, it just needed some dusting, so we took a damp paper cloth and just yeah. wiped off the, the dust that it had on it. And changed the ribbon. And changed the ribbon. The ribbon was obviously old and all of that, yeah. but that's all we've done to it. Yes, it does have a really, really hard patent, and it needs to be replaced. And you did clean some of the uh, type slugs, I think. I cleaned a couple of type slugs because when we put on the ink in your ribbon, yeah. there was a little bit of stuff in the classic mm -hmm. uh, looped letters. But watching you type on this, you just go to town on it, and you type, you type really fast. It's great. It's, you know, it's got that uh, wonderful royal feel, so it's a great typewriter. You, it's an uh, adjustable touch and you can just take to it naturally. Yep. Uh, you know, one of the great things like here on your Royal KMM is that the letter A and the shift mechanism yes. don't interfere with right. each other. You don't have that problem with the A and the shift lock being close together, so that's a great keyboard for that reason. Yep. And it, yeah, so it's a really good writing typewriter, and there, you know, when I looked it up, I was kind of curious. There were a couple of authors that uh, have used this typewriter. Um, David uh, Letterman and Richard Schickel, and even though David McCulloch used a Royal KMM, essentially he was using the same yeah, time the writer, same mechanism, the right. same mechanism. Right. And so, so many anybody of the other authors that used Royal standard machines using the same yes. typewriter. Very good. Well, I'm glad to see that this found a good home. In fact, one of our people in the typosphere that we know through one type page or whatever, Eric, Eric Tid, had Eric out there. Eric had actually commented one of the videos, the, the, a couple of videos ago, where we found the typewriter in the antique store. He commented that he was in the very same antique store a right. while ago and saw the very same typewriter and almost bought it, except he was flying on an airplane and didn't want it. And I'm glad he didn't buy it because th that caused this typewriter to sit longer in the antique store. Yes. So I was able to get a discount because yes. they wanted to move the merchandise. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much, Eric. Yes, <laughs> that helped quite a bit. Well, we're going to cut this short, uh, but I really appreciate uh, Kevin sharing uh, with us your new find here, the Royal Empress. What a beautiful machine it is. And I don't want you painting it bright purple. What? Not even lilac? Well, maybe lilac, I guess. With little flowers? With little flowers. Little flowers? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways, in any event, I hope you guys find your dream typewriter and stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.